The Las Vegas Raiders are the next up. Seven and a half wins is their total. And yes, that makes three teams in this division whose win totals are seven and a half. So, and then you've got the Chiefs at 11 and a half, which is a big number, but hey, I, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibilities. Uh, the Raiders needed cornerback, linebacker, and wide receiver help. And boy, did they attack those big time. Um, I mean, they, they took one linebacker, Tanner Muse, out of Clemson, and they did that in the third round. They had two first-round picks, three third-round picks, and two fourth-round picks. And they made the most of it. So, they knew they needed wide receiver help. Well, they knocked that out. They got Henry Ruggs as their first pick, which kind of surprised everybody. But the Raiders, for years, have been enamored with speed. And he was the fastest wide receiver in the draft. Uh, on top of that... You got Lynn Bowden Jr., who list. I mean, he's he won the award for most versatile player in college football last year. Yep. He's a wide receiver, quarterback, and running back all in one. Uh, he ain't a great quarterback, but he can play the position. And then you also got wide receiver Brian Edwards out of South Carolina right after that. Now, along with that, they needed cornerback help. Well, they took care of that too. Uh, Damon Arnett out of Ohio State, they took him early, and that was super surprising. I thought it was a bit of a reach. Uh, and then they took Amik Robertson out of uh, Louisiana Tech in the fourth round. Another kid who played insane. I mean, that Louisiana Tech secondary last year was loaded. Uh, didn't get to show it against a ton of, you know, big-time talent. But you can you can kind of see with cornerbacks how well their footwork is, how, how good, like, how good they play the position, right? That's Or how well they play uh, the position. So... I trust the guys at Louisiana Tech. They took him in the fourth round, and then they also took offensive lineman John Simpson out of Clemson uh, along with that. So a lot of cornerbacks, a lot of wide receivers, uh, and then they took an offensive lineman, um, and they got their linebacker. You know, I, I think they they met a ton of needs. I like I like what Mike is doing as the GM there. I do think that you were right on draft night when you were talking about Gruden is the guy, and he just kind of put him in a corner and said, look, this is what we're doing, and you can give me your suggestions. And I think that he did give suggestions. Later, later he did. Yeah. I, there's no doubt in my mind the Ruggs pick is a is a Gruden pick. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, what about, no what about Arnett? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I know John's an offensive guy, and, and – and John likes speed and he likes whatever. As much as I think Ruggs was a mistake pick because I like CD and Judy far better than him, I think there's a pretty big gap between those two guys and the other receivers in this draft. I I think if there's any coach that has the freedom and flexibility because of the strength of his contract, He's going to do everything he can to make Rudy uh, that to make Rugs look look like the right pick. He's oh, yeah. going to force him the ball as often as he can force him the ball, no matter what. Just because he's got to be proven right. He's got an ego and he cares more about being right than winning games. And so, so does that mean Rugs is going to look like the wrong pick later? No. But if Judy and CD end up being stars in this league. I think they've got Julio Jones, DeAndre Hopkins, Michael Thomas, top tier abilities. Okay. Yeah. I don't know that anybody else in this draft, if they became DeAndre Hopkins, I would be shocked. They uh they did the same thing this year that they did last year, which is uh they took a bunch of Clemson and Alabama and, you know, players from the best teams. They, they took hard workers that they know are going to be hard workers. And they got a guy out of Ohio State in the first round. They got a guy out of Alabama in the first round. They got two Clemson guys. And, and then they took some flyers. You know, Muse worries me. I, Muse, yeah, I agree. See, we, used to, we used to call this tweeners, and it was not a good thing, by the way. When you didn't know what a guy could play in the NFL, is he, is he small enough to play fa safety or is he too big? Is he too small to play linebacker? Is he too big to play safety? But yet, he's not great at either. So, while it sounds versatile, that's not a position where you want that kind of versatility. Agreed. Agreed. You want him to be able to play safety or cornerback because that means he's fast enough to play either. 
and big and strong enough to play safety. Yeah. Last year they took Hunter Infro from uh, from Clemson. They took Trayvon Mullen from Clemson in the second round. They took Josh Jacobs running back out of Alabama in the first round. And they took Cleveland Farrell from uh, Clemson in the first round. Like they, And they have talked about this. Uh, they are going to draft players from the best teams in college football. And they think that that's actually going to work. And maybe it will. I mean, they, they were they were surprisingly competent last year. Like they they were not a terrible team, and it was no. it was interesting. Now you know they picked up Mariota and in, in free agency to give a little competition to Derek Carr. Uh, McKinnon jumped in on Facebook. He said, "I actually really love the Bowden pick. Hate the Raiders, but I think they have a top five draft class." Uh, I I really like what the Raiders did here. Like it, it totally wasn't agree. conventional. It wasn't. Totally it, it, no. I thought it was good. I, yeah. I, I like what I, they got. I, I think I think they made a mistake. I mean, if you if you change rugs out for Judy, I think this is way scarier. Just way scarier. I think I don't I don't think there is as big a drop off from Jerry Judy to Henry Ruggs as you would think. Yeah, that's fine. You can you think know. that. You're a Bama fan. That's fine, Gary. Well, no, it would have called, been the same thing with CeeDee Lamb. The guy like, caught 40 football passes last year. 40. When when everybody else in this draft class that was a receiver caught 80, he caught half. With the best quarterback that he's ever played with in his life. Okay, at some point in time, that has to matter. Why did he not get the ball more? Let's see. Yeah. Judy had 77 receptions last year. Why is he half? Half of that. That has to matter. And I didn't watch enough tape to figure it out. He looked unbelievable in the 40 that he caught. That's great. But at some point in time, is he Randy Moss that takes plays off? Was he not getting open? Was he not capable of getting open? It's it's, Did he it's get pretty open crazy. because they 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 double teamed Judy with their best cornerback, so he had the third guy covering him. I mean, I don't know the answer to that. I know this: it's really a hard pill for me to swallow. And I'm not saying he's not going to be great. Okay, not saying that either. But I know C.D. Lamb and Jared Judy. Nobody could guard those guys. Nobody could cover those guys, okay? And they have the numbers, the stats, and everything else to go along with it. And while see. he looks electric and he's really fast, somebody's got to explain to me how the hell this guy only caught 40 balls. Judy had 77. Jalen Waddell had 33. Ruggs had 40. And 40. then Devonta Smith, let's see what he had. da 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 da, da. Well, and now it's not pulling him up. That's fantastic. There we go. Devontae Smith out of Alabama. How many did he have last year? He had 68 receptions last year. So, at, you know, I mean, Alabama had two receivers that went over 1,200 yards, and that was Judy and Smith. Uh, Ruggs averaged the most per reception out of everybody, and that was uh, over that's 18 it. and a half. Big, he got big plays. That's fine. But that's not that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, I understand. I, I see can, where you're coming from. When you're talking so. about comparing him to two guys that could be the best receiver in football, I don't think he's got that because something made him drop down. Because you can't just say Alabama had that. I, I was trying to figure out what you were using to pull those numbers up real fast, and I just couldn't do it. LSU guys didn't have that. Justin Jefferson caught a hell of a lot more than 40 balls, and he had to share the ball with Thaddeus Moss, with Chase, you know, like like with more players than 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 Ruggs had to share it with. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So I mean, you're, you're that can't right. be an argument. That just can't be an excuse. Yeah. I don't know what you do. Once again, doesn't mean he's going to be trash. Doesn't mean he's going to be garbage. It just means he the other guys were much more He the third best guy in this draft but I don't understand why you don't take one of the two that could be the very best guys. I was using a sports reference, by the way. Let so. me ask you this. If right now you could go back to that draft class and, and we know the outcome of it, why would you take Watkins when you know for a fact you could take Odell Beckham or, or Julio Jones or somebody like that? Why would you, Mike Evans, why would you take Watkins knowing the other guys are there with their productivity? You wouldn't. You, you wouldn't. wouldn't take him over those guys. Yeah. No, you're right. You're 100 percent right. Um. Yeah. I. I really I, like this draft. I think they did a really good job. It's easy to do a good job when you have seven picks in four rounds. 
Yeah. In the deepest draft that we may have ever seen. Yeah, they they got they got good dudes. They I mean they They don't have seventh round, round flyers. No. <laughs> they, because they didn't have seven round picks. They got no. seven picks, but they took them all in four rounds. That's it. you're hundred percent right. They three third round picks, two fourth round picks, two first round picks. The only and pick they that made the I, most of them. That I didn't I don't like the rugs pick because Judy and and C D were there. That, yeah. that's that's my logic. It's my argument. Nobody's gonna change my mind. I'm not a fan of the Muse pick because we're being really nice in this draft. Nobody ever says negative things about anybody anymore. Not hating on the kid, but there was a thing called tweeners. And and this guy's a tweener. And if he can't figure out how to play linebacker or safety, he ain't gonna play either. And it was a wasted pick. Now, Other the, than the that, only all one, the rest of these picks, great, fine. I I think they crushed the draft. I, I think I think Lynn Bowden himself is. I mean that that could be. Yeah. Nope, that could I be agree. the best pick they make. Uh, yeah. But T- Tanner Muse, like, yeah, he's safety or linebacker. Like, he's we can call him versatile if we want to. The only player like that that was worth a, a big-time pick would be Isaiah Simmons. Like, that's yeah. it. it and, and I'll that's tell because, you this. There's a little – I have. I wasn't bold enough to say it on a thing. I, I, I don't know that I'm going to say that. But at some point in time, we got to say, is he the same thing? Is there a position he could play in the NFL? Because this is an offense where you need him to sometimes run the ball, sometimes catch the ball, sometimes throw the ball. This is defense where I pretty much just need you to have a job and do your job, right? Yeah. And yeah. is there a place for him to do that? Like with Tanner, like I think Isaiah Simmons is is fast enough and big enough to yeah. be able to do that. I don't know. That well, I think I think is... he's going to be a really good safety. I would play if I had Isaiah Simmons, but I like. I like the safety position in the backfield more than any other in the in the DBs more than any other position out there. I think yeah. it's more valuable. And that, I think that, it's more valuable there. That may be like I think Muse is probably going to be like a cover linebacker. Like I think I think that's the biggest thing here. Like it, and I think he's big enough to be able to handle guys like Kelsey and whatever else. And he's he's quick enough to be able to. And, and I understand, like I know, but I I think that may be the only. I don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like I, I, I really didn't think that he would be a third round pick. I'll say that. Let, like, let I don't think it's a wasted pick. Down. I just the guy, the guy who's been locking down tight ends in the NFL, and the only guy that's really been able to do it and do it successfully, it's is coming to the downside of his career. And that's Eric Berry. There's, yeah. There's, there's no other safety slash linebacker, whatever. That really gives linebacker that that really gives the big athletic tight ends problems, and he gives them fits. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, I mean, he, and that's he, it. He grew into that role a little more. Like uh, once he got to the NFL, he he actually got a little well, bit bigger. So he got bigger, but he's just that guy was the smartest guy on that football team when he was at Tennessee, and and in that locker room, he probably still one of the smartest guys on that team. Oh, I, I mean, he's I agree. He was a different kind of player. I agree. Um, all right, so I I. I don't hate their draft. Like I actually kind of like their draft. No, don't uh, hate it at all. Like it a lot. So, who, so hey, who, Joseph who Gomez won, jumped who in. Lost? Uh, hold, on, hold on, Joseph Gomez jumped in. He just wanted us to say. Uh, he said, "Can we just say the Giants choke the uh, choke the pick?" Um, we yeah, we can we can talk about the Giants choking picks all day. That's totally fine. Um, no, as far as who won the AFC West, like the, our winner and loser, I I think. I'm going to say that the winner is the Broncos. And I think I'm going to say that the loser. See, I don't, I don't hate any of these. Like, I don't That's, think any of them are bad. I, I might, I might say, I might say the Chargers. Chargers are the definitive loser of this draft. Yeah. It's not close. It's just not close. And the Broncos are the first team that I have a draft that I love. There's yeah. not a single pick that they made. That I didn't think that was a good pick. That was a good pick, and they got to pick a lot of them. Yeah, they most certainly did. They most so, certainly did. I, right. I I really love that one. So. Yeah, the Broncos. I I think were definitive winners in this division, um, and then the Raiders. I or the uh, the Chargers. Sorry, I think are the uh, the last place in this, in this division. Now I don't hate any of them, but you know I'll I'll roll with that. I think that's perfectly fine. Ah, <sighs> and now Friday is done. We are ready to roll out of here. We hope everybody enjoys their weekends. We're going to go ahead and head out. There's there's nothing going on on the uh, on the timeline that we need to hit, right? 
No, that's it. Let's roll. That is it. All right. We will uh we will make sure that uh that all of you will be back on Monday, of course. 4 30 on Monday. It's gonna be a good time. We'll uh we're we're gonna attempt to have some guests on next week. So hopefully you will tune in for that. There will be much that happens this week.